Flavio, I see you. How are you? What's up, guys? How are you today? I pray your day was good. How was your day? What's new? What's shaking? What's popping? How was your day? Oh, hey, Rosie Posey, I see you. DJ, Sheila. So tiring. Because you're busy. You got a lot of stuff going on? Or some other things. God is moving. Do you care to share how God is moving? I feel like I'm yelling already. God is advancing you. Or God is advancing. Do you care to share? We would love to hear your daily testimony. <laughs> busy? Okay. Yeah, salvation. Amen. You know, busy is good. It means you're alive. It means you're alive. Hey, woman of God. I am. I am. Um, you know, them three o'clock. I get up at three o'clock in the morning. And um, I didn't do my hair either. <laughs> I just put this thing on. <laughs> hey, man of God, how are you? Hey, Sandrika, how are you? Yeah, so um, I've been cutting calories too. And so, you know, that really plays a role sometimes in your energy a little bit. So, hey, woman of God. So you just got to get kind of get used to it. And so I'm still working out um, at the same intensity, but I need to create the caloric deficit. So um, that's always fun. <laughs> um, so if I look tired, you know, just um, don't talk about it. I'm aging backwards. I am the fountain of youth. Hallelujah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Amen. Amen. We are rejoicing. We are rejoicing. We are rejoicing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell, you know, with night, when I like, sometimes I'd be like blessing the Lord and then I see like my trap pop out and I'd be like, girl, put that trap back in. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a CrossFitter. So um, we do heavy, heavy weights. But yeah, so um, I pray everybody's doing well. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know if everybody is, um, you know, every, I think everybody got a little fluffy from the winter. And so a lot of people are, you know, starting to kind of address that as the sun is coming out, sun's out, gun's out. Um, so, uh, yeah, so if you're cutting calories like I am, I'm praying your strength in Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, so I pray that you guys are, though, you know, working out and getting exercise and, you know, taking care of yourself, taking care of your health, because that is the one thing that you have and you have control over. Um, yeah. Um, to, you know, you, you go through cycles. She let so we the winter cycle was the fluffy cycle. Um, so in order to get gains or to get definition, um, you gotta have you gotta create that deficit. Um, because when you do, you really do make really big gains. Um, so you just you go through these cycles where you're off and on and off and on and off and on. So it's time to get back on. And I just I just really want some more discipline in my life more discipline. And so, um, how, how many of you guys use my fitness pal? Does anybody use that? The app, my fitness pal. Yeah. Uh huh. He's so funny. Yeah. So my fitness pal is good because it doesn't track weightlifting, but it tracks cardio. But you can look up your weightlifting um, and get a kind of a number for about how many calories. It's not going to be spot on because everybody's a little bit different. It makes a difference if you did, did it fast or if you did it slow, how many reps you did. So that's why they don't really count weightlifting. But my fitness pal is really good because it forces you to look at what you're eating. And so for someone like me, you know, you know, I don't eat a whole lot like all the time, 
but what I eat will be trash in the sense of what I should be getting in terms of nutrients. And so you're confronted with that. You know what I mean? And so if you're not feeling your best, if you're not looking your best, if you're, you know, not as having as much energy as you should, um, you're forced to look at in the app, like what you're doing. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, Hey, Shimmer Kai, we love you, woman of God. That's pretty eye opening. So if you're, if you're just wanting to even just look at what you're eating, um, you can keep your calories the same, I guess. Sometimes we don't even realize how many calories we're eating a day, right? So it just helps you to keep track of what's going on in your body. Hallelujah. So that's my fitness pal. Use it. You know, it's it's really confronting. It's like the Holy Spirit's like in your face. You know what I mean? And then like for me, I saw I was at a real deficit for potassium. And potassium is so huge for everything. And it's like I can't get the I can't get the percentage to really move. And so the Lord began talking to me about why not. And um so okay, you gotta make some changes, right? Praise Jesus. All right, so um, do we have any questions about the last two days worth of teaching? Has it been heavy? Has it been a lot? What do you think about it? Have you been, um, you know, praying through it, in it? Have you noticed your prayers changing? Have you, what have you noticed? Amen. How are you guys applying it? Have you started to apply it yet? Amen. Amen. That's always awesome, right? Confident how, though? Be, be a little more specific. Be a little more pacific. Yes, it's God who does the work through me. I love that. I love that. Isn't that empowering? Isn't that empowering to take the weight off? And, but then to have the scripture where you take the, the, the weight off, not letting bills blow my mind. Yep, because God's going to give you strategy for those bills, right? God's going to give us strategy because wisdom wisdom yep it's okay it's okay you know it's this is a lot to come into um this is a really big revelation you know what i mean and so as it's being poured in it's like you pour you poured me a glass of water right so the glass was empty and then you poured the water in so now the glass isn't empty anymore but the water is still not in me right but it's in my possession it's in my possession if this is making sense and so this is what the Lord has done this week. He's, he's poured your, into your cup, but it's going to, like, if I just kind of, y'all see this glass, right? If I just tipped it up right now, what, what would happen to all the water? The water would get on me, but it wouldn't get in me, right? If I, this is a full cup, if I took all 20 ounces and I was just like, I want it all, right? <laughs> I, the water would be on me, but it wouldn't be in me, Right? So now, you know, I was thirsty, the cup was empty, God poured the cup, it's to the brim. And so now I have to, however you drink, you drink, you sip, you gulp, whatever, but I, I want to make sure I don't spill any of it, right? I don't spill any of it. So your glass is full, but now it's time to take it from in my possession, right, to having possession of it, if that makes sense. So, uh... It's, it's going to, you know, take a moment as we, we have it, but we've got to have it in us, if that makes sense. So that's kind of where we are um, with this revelation, because I know I really want, you know, anesism, um, I really want um, to move in the level of power that I believe the Lord is saying that we have access to. Um, and and so that, that means like really sitting down and looking at the glass of water, taking it in at the rate that I take it in at, right? Um, so that it's useful. It's so, that it's, so that it's useful for me. So I pray that that's what you guys are doing. So does anybody have any questions about anything that we went over the last couple of days? I don't, cause I, I, you know, I don't want to load so much on you and, you know, you're like, ah, I don't know about this. Y'all are awfully quiet today. Amen. So that means no questions. <laughs> okay.
Okay, so we're going to be in John 13. So we're, we're going to move into the next level of this teaching. And this will be the last teaching for the week because I'm not going to be on tomorrow anyway. I really don't need to be on on Friday either. But if I get on here looking crazy... Yes, John 13. Yeah, yeah, John 13. I'm going to be traveling next week. So I think on Tuesday, it's a travel day. So um, I won't be on... Um, but it's all good. So today's going to be the last day of teaching, but this is a lot. This is, this is a lot. So, um, we're going to start with verse three. Let me know when you get there. John chapter 13, verse three, where's we're going to start. My music stopped. Let me know when you get there and get some notes and stuff. As the Lord is speaking to you about what he's talking about, you know, take notes. Uh, so you have some praise points. You have some new garments to put on. Um, some new garments to put on. Uh, you have some, you know, garments like is, is like identity and, um, hey, okay, woman of God. It's like identity and personality and paradigm, right? So your paradigm, what you think is how you're going to engage, right? What you think about fill in the blank is how you're gonna get engage with fill in the blank, right? And so uh, the expectation of the Lord causes our paradigm to shift um, greatly. And a lot of times when we've been operating, um, hey, woman of God, when we've been operating, certainly when, it's, when we talk about prayer, right, and the things of God, and when we really begin to understand how much power he's really invested in our prayer language, how much power he's invested, right, in our sound. I'm not talking about the petition prayer language, right, and the prayer language of releasing and decreeing and bringing people into the knowledge of the expectation of the Lord. It, it's a lot because it, it's breaking down um, a lot of things that we had constructed, right? Um, but that's exciting. That's exciting. So let me know when y'all get there. Thank you. <laughs> Salute ready. <laughs> okay, she's driving. Yeah, please don't take notes. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to go ahead and get started. All right, I need y'all to get, be a little more excited. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for today. We thank you for everything that we've walked through today, even for the people who say we are tired. God, we even thank you for the activities that we engaged with that made us tired. We thank you, God, for life. We thank you for having a life. We thank you for having activity, energy. We thank you for having purpose and potential. We thank you, God, that every day we wake up on this side of glory. It is something to be grateful for. And so even right now, we, we in your presence, we get amped up. In your presence, we get filled up. In your presence, we get caught up. Hey, woman of God, in your presence, we come close to you. And so, Father, I pray for your people. I lay hands on this atmosphere. Hallelujah. And I just decree and declare that our minds will be expanded, that we will hear from heaven. We thank you, God, for speaking to us because we could be somewhere where you are not speaking to us or it's not the voice of the Lord or it's not the revelation of God, but you think so much of us to meet with us. And so, God, you're so consistent. You're so consistent. And so, God, I just want to praise you right now for your consistency. I want to praise you, God, of how you just show up over and over and over again and how you blow my mind with what you're doing with your people. I'm so glad that I get to watch. And, God, I count it an honor to speak your oracles. I count it an honor, God, to see your people come in contact with a greater, which is you. And so, God, I believe that greater works is in their territory. I believe that greater works is in their belly. I believe that greater works is in their hands, God. And so, Father, even as it feels like a struggle sometimes to get there and to obtain because, you know, we're in the flesh suit. I see you, woman of God. I know she's laughing. We're in this flesh suit. We thank you, God, 
that the same power that raised Christ is the same power that what quickeneth our mortal bodies. And so God, I bring to you these mortal bodies. I bring to you these mortal minds. I bring to you these mortal lives. And I thank you, Father, that you remind your people that they're also seated in you in heavenly places. They're seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. I thank you, Father, for the exousia. I thank you, Father, for your dunamis. I thank you, Father, for your name. I thank you, Father, for your word and your decrees that are over them. And so now secure this atmosphere so that we can hear from heaven. And so, God, it's with worship. Yeah, it's with worship and attentiveness, God, that we say we want more of you. And so expand this revelation tonight. Expand this revelation tonight. And so I'm going to pray what I pray over me, over your people in the scripture. Father, may we see the Messiah. May we see the message in the Messiah. And may we see the message in the Messiah. But can we see me in the message and me in the Messiah? And so God, we thank you that you are transplanting us from this side of glory and to the glory of your word, the glory of your countenance. Cause your face to shine upon us as we search your scripture to find the Messiah, the message, and then ourselves. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're in John chapter 13. We're going to start with, um, what did I say? Verse 3. All right. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands <clears throat> and that he, <clears throat> he was come from the Father <clears throat> and went to God. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from the Father, hey, woman of God, <clears throat> and went to God. He riseth, this is going to be one of the concentration verses, he riseth from the supper, and he laid aside his garments. He took a towel, and he girded himself. After that, he poureth water in a basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded with. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto the Lord, Why do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, you don't know now but you shall know hereafter. Peter said unto him, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, if I wash not thou, you have no part with me. Verse nine. <laughs> and Peter being Peter, <laughs> he said unto the Lord, <laughs> not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said unto him, verse 10, that thou is washed. He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And you are clean, but not all. When he's speaking, when he says not all, he's talking about Judas. He's talking about Judas, okay? Jesus said unto him, he that is washed needeth not, but to wash his feet, that word saying but, but to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. I'm in the King James. I'm in the King James. That word wit means he is whole. He is whole. <laughs> he is clean throughout. No, I'm in King James. That's why I'm saying wit, thou, and this, and those. I'm in King James. So did y'all catch that? But is clean every, it means that word wit. It means whole. It means complete. It means all together. It means throughout. And it means completely. You are clean, whole, thoroughly, genuinely, all over, all of that good stuff. You are clean, but not all. He's talking about Jesus when he says not all. Let's go back up to verse 3. Okay, so this is the chunk of verses that we're going to talk about. And so if we go back to what day are we in? If we, Wednesday. If we go back to Monday, right? We go back to Monday and we started with the whole Jesus is... Jesus was saying, the Father is in me and I am in the Father, right? And we see him show up and say, everything that I'm doing, everything I'm doing, I'm showing you the model. I'm hey, man of God, I'm showing you the model of how to, um, hey, woman of God, long time no talk to. I'm showing you the model of how to, um, remember, we're talking about power of attorney. We're talking about standing in proxy, not proxy for the people, but proxy for the Lord, right? And so, uh, I, we started backwards, and so now we're starting at the very beginning, right? 
And so now we're talking about, remember yesterday, hey, woman of God, you know, yesterday we talked about, um, what did we talk about yesterday? The expectation of God, Lord, hey, woman of hey, Japan. Uh, we talked about the expectation of, of the Lord and so we peel the word back, right? The revelation of Jesus, the revelation of the Lord. We, we peel that word back so that we could juice it. The revelation of the Lord is the expectation of the Lord, right? And so when we see Jesus wa walking and Jesus working and him standing in proxy for God and him saying to you, him saying to you, I go to the father, I go to the father. And so now it's your turn to do what I'm doing, Right? It's your turn to do what I'm doing. And then yesterday, he's telling us that when we understand the revelation, right? When we get revelation, that is the expectation of God. And we are to enforce the expectation of God to see. He causes us to understand. Hey, man of God, he causes us to learn. He causes us to gaze upon, right? The expectation or the revelation of the Lord. And then we what? We go back to Monday's teaching and we stand in proxy and we force it through. We force it into the atmosphere. We bring it. We write it on the walls. We publish it. We proclaim it. We preach it. We write the vision and we make it plain. We write the vision and we make it plain, right? And so today we're going to back up even before that, right? We're going to back up even before that so that we can get the full on expectation of how when you have this type of power, come on guys, when you have this type of power, when you have this type of responsibility, when you have this type of power, how you are to govern yourself so that when you stand in proxy for God, you really stand in the full measure and the full proxy of God. And so that's why we're looking at the scripture last. All right. And so Jesus, knowing that the father had given all things into his hand, I need you to replace the name of Jesus with your name. Why? Because when Jesus did this, you were already in him. And so as he was doing this, the expectation is today when you, um, the expectation, sorry, I'm getting the text messages, guys. Um, the expectation is that as he did what we're getting ready to go through, you did it. And so now you're going to, you're going to follow this model from here on out. This is the model that you're putting on. You're going to allow this mind that was in Christ Jesus at this very moment to be in you. And as you go into the earth and you stand in proxy for God, releasing the revelation and the expectation of heaven in the earth over God's people, there's a certain way that you're supposed to govern yourself. Okay. All right, so we're in John chapter 13, verse 3. And you, say your name, and Sandrika, and Hair Angel, and Rosie Posey, and Carlisle, knowing that the Father had given all things into your hands. That's a lot of responsibility. Ty, come on, Ty. Ty, God has given you all things into your hands because you're standing in proxy for him. All things are in your hands. And that you come from God and you went to God. You come from God and you went to God, okay? He riseth up from the supper. He laid aside his garment. He took a towel and he girded himself. Okay, let's break this down. What this, what this is symbolic of. Everybody say symbolic. Turn to your neighbor. <laughs> Turn to the angel that's on your right and say symbolic. Yes, it is symbolic. Jesus rises from the table. The supper is where? On a table. It's on a little table. It's like the size. It's like the height of a little coffee table. So I'm giving you the background if you're taking notes because this is going to kind of make this come alive. Okay. So Jesus gets up from his table. Jesus gets up from the king's table. Right? Jesus gets up from the king's table. Christ leaves the king's table in glory. Right? It's symbolic. And he lays aside his garments. He strips off the clothes of divinity. He strips off so that he can put on the earth suit. So he could put on the clothing of mankind so that he could come and serve mankind. So this is, this is symbolic. So Jesus rises from the seat of honor. Jesus rises from the seat. He gets up from the seat to go down to serve. So he gets up from the table. He lays aside his garment. He takes his garments off. He lays them aside. He took a towel and he wraps himself. 
After that, he pours water into a basin and he begins to wash the disciples' feet. And he wipes them with the towel that he, he's using to put around his body. So what's on him, he uses as an apparatus or a trapping for the cleansing of their feet, okay? When he's clean, this, what he's doing right now is attached to the death and the resurrection. It's attached to the death and the resurrection. When we see the events that begin to unfold, they are all part of the one event. The death and the resurrection of Christ is one event. It's one event. The birth, the death, and the resurrection of Christ. It is one event. You because they they all go together. So when, the moment he was birthed, he was he he was resurrected. The moment he was put on the cross, he was already resurrected. You cannot detach them. They're all part of one event, if this is making sense. Amen. So <clears throat> after that, he pours water into a basin and he begins to wash the disciples' feet. The washing of the disciples' feet is symbolic for what happened to us. He has washed us with himself. He himself calls us to be clean. Everybody on this scope, he himself calls us to be clean. The work of Christ. Now when we're talking about Christ, when he's in, in, in Monday's teaching, right? And we saw him do the miracles and we saw the deliverance and we saw the power of Jesus. And we were like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He was like, no, 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 no. That's not my work. That's not, that's, that's, that's all the father. But right here, he's showing us the, thus the, us, the, he's showing us the, he's showing us the sim, the symbolic nature of the cleansing of mankind. He washes us. It is because of the work of Christ. It is because of him getting up from the table in glory. Laying aside the garments of glory. Girding himself with the apparatus of a servant. A towel. A king wouldn't have a towel. Not for cleaning. That will be the servant's job, not the king's job, and certainly not the king of kings' job. So he lays aside the identity that, would, that, that as we know him as king of kings, so that he could put on the identity of son of man, so he could come and he could wash us. He could come and he could make us clean. And so he's, this is the, symb the symbolic symbology it's a new word <laughs> of the of Christ's work that he did that made us clean that makes us clean right and so verse 6 then came he to Simon Peter and Peter said unto him lord why are you washing my feet and Jesus answered unto him and said why what i do you don't know but you shall know hereafter. You're not going to get it now because I haven't died on the cross yet. But after I die on the cross, after I'm raised, it's all going to make sense. And Peter said unto him, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus had answered him and said, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part in me. All right, so let's talk about this. Let's talk about what's really going down in this room. The type of dinner that they were at. Because remember I told you guys, the table that they're sitting at is low. It is a low table. It is so low like a coffee table. Everybody's sitting on the ground. Because it's so low. They're sitting on the ground. It's in like in a U shape. It's in a U shape. The table is low. So when they take their sandals off, they've been walking. They've been in dust. They've been in dirt. All of that. Their feet is really, really, really dirty. And it's really, 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 really noticeable. It's really, really noticeable. But when they came in, it's crazy. This is what commentators say. There was no, usually a servant would come and wash your feet. If you invited somebody to your house for a meal in those days, one of your servants would wash the feet of the people who visited you. They would wash the feet of everybody that came in because you're sitting at these low tables. They reclined when they ate. They were like almost like laying down when they ate. And so their food was right near their feet. 
You know what I mean? So imagine you sitting on the floor and you can see like people's dirty feet next to your food. So they would clean their feet. The servants would clean the feet of the people who came to feast. The servants would clean the feet of those who came to feast. It was the servant's job to clean the feet of those who came to feast. It was the servant's job. And so here it is. They are sitting down to eat. They are eating. Their, their food has commenced. Jesus gets up, lays aside, and he takes on the picture of, of the servant. And so he's saying to everybody that these are soon to be apostles. These are his disciples and that we know them as the apostles. He's saying to them, you have a seat with me. You have a seat at my table always. You and I are one. You have a seat at the king's table. But this picture that I'm showing you, you will have to get up from the seat that you, you may say you deserve, the seat that people may say you deserve because of status, because of anointing, because of calling, because of, uh, you know, finances. The seat at the king's table, the king is saying, just because you have a seat there, that's not where you sit. Just because you have a seat there while you're on this side of glory, that's not where you sit. You take on the form of a servant. I hope this is making sense. I hope this is making sense. And so when he gets to Peter, Peter Papa, praise God for Peter. When he gets to Peter, Peter is like, what you doing? What you doing? If John the Baptist says, I, one is coming, that I'm unworthy to tie his shoes, essentially, right? I'm, I'm unworthy to tie his shoes. Surely Peter is like, right? So commentators say the way that the table was set up, Peter was probably last to get his feet washed. And so he's watching Jesus wash all of these other people's feet. And it seems the Bible, the way the Bible, the scripture is set up, that nobody else objected. And so Jesus gets to Peter and Peter, who knows what Peter was thinking, but he could have been thinking like, ain't nobody else going to object. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fail this test. I'm going to object. What you doing? Why are you washing my feet? You are Jesus, right? You are the Messiah. You are the rabbi. You are right. And so he's like, what are you doing? Oh, so Jesus says what he's getting ready to do. And so Peter essentially is like, well, I should be washing your feet, right? I I'll wash your feet. And so commentators say this, and I love this. Commentators say this. Any one of those disciples, it was, it was probably one very, very awkward moment. They're, they're sitting at the table. There's food. Essentially, Jesus gets up and he's naked. Can we just be honest right now? He takes his clothes off and he puts a towel around himself and he fills the basin up in the middle of dinner and he starts washing people's feet. And so this is like a highly uncomfortable moment. Like when you sitting on the front row and praise dancers are praising. Have you guys ever watched the people on the front row? <laughs> They're all like, yes, God. Like, cause you know, you like feel like the praise dancers like right here and you like right here. And you're like, I don't know where I'm supposed to put my eyes. <laughs> maybe that's just me maybe that's just me um you know but sometimes you know I, I usually try to get up and try to move out the pew you know what I'm saying but sometimes you know surprise there's praise dancers and like there's not a whole lot of room at the altar not a whole lot of room and so you right here and the praise dancers right here you know what I mean and you're like I don't know what to do right now so I'm just gonna be like you know I just gotta be me I just gotta be honest and be like okay God <laughs> so it was like that it was highly uncomfortable it was because here it is. Jesus is not telling them what he's doing. They've never done this before, right? Flaggers too, exactly. You know, they got the flag and you're, and you're like, I can't even, you know, like, it's like going to the movies and you sit in the front, you sit in the front row and the screen is like right here until you're like, <laughs> like, <laughs> and so with the flaggers, you're like, I can't even enjoy this because I can't see the flag, you know? Um, right. And so Jesus, he's never done this before. This is a first for everybody and they have no idea what he's doing. So it's, it's really uncomfortable. Okay. It's, it's not like, and then everybody's feet is dirty and the Messiah is washing their feet. Right. And so commentators say 
you know, was highly, this is a, a crazy situation that nobody was there to wash their feet because of the type of supper they were coming. It was very formal. It was very formal. Um, or a very formal setting. That's number one. But then number two, the disciples would have gladly washed Jesus' feet. But the problem is, is a servant, when they're washing the feet of the people who come to feast, you cannot pick and choose whose feet you want to wash who comes through that door. If you're going to wash one pair of feet, you've got to wash them all. This is so good. And so here it is. We have Jesus with the 12 inner circle. We have Jesus with the people who have been, you know, hanging around him and hanging together. And no one moved to wash the Messiah's feet. Because they would have to wash everybody else's. And to wash everybody else's would mean you were lower than everybody else in the room. So here it is. The person who has the highest position, not only in the room, but the highest position in the earth and in the heavens, gets up from his seat, removes his clothes, wraps a towel around himself, and becomes the lowest person in the room. I hope y'all are seeing this. This is the picture of our life. That every room that you go in, as we wash people with Christ, we don't mind if we're the lowest person in the room. We don't mind if the people around us are thinking we're the lowest people in the room. We're looking for opportunities to get up from our seat of perceived status, realized authority, to remove anything that would be status, anything that would be name, anything that would be our glory, to remove it so that we can do the work, so that we can stand in proxy. Are y'all seeing this? To really stand in proxy. To really stand in proxy for God. We see the picture of the power of Christ. This is what his whole life was. Favor. The picture of favor is for the greater to lean over to the lesser. It is for the greater to come down to the level of the lesser. That's what Christ did. He came down to the level of the lesser. And so in this room, he gives a real illustration of what it means to become lowly. The power of the power of your lowliness. The power of your serving. Here it is. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Here it is. Christ. Here it is. The one who has all power. The one whom all things were made for in the heavens and in the earth. Everything was made for him by him. Here it is. He gets up from the table in glory. He takes off the glory garments, puts on a flesh suit, bends over, and begins to wash mankind. So just in case we didn't understand the picture of what makes him him, let this mind be in you. <laughs> that was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery. A lot of times we think of that scripture, we're thinking about the power, we're thinking about the demonstration, we're thinking about the, but the demonstration starts there. The demonstration starts there. 
God removes a piece of himself. He bends over to the lesser to wash them. No respect of persons. Don't mind washing whomever comes in the room. Don't mind if the other people who were seated at the table never get up from the table and if they classify you as being the lowest person in the room. Look for opportunities to be the lowest person, meaning you get up from your seat and you go down, you bend over and you favor people. Beautiful are the feet of those who what? So he's washing their feet. <laughs> he's washing their feet. Beautiful are the feet of those. I hope you guys see this. And so while we're talking about standing in proxy for, for God, when we talk about releasing, we talk about the expansion, we talk about the revelation being peeled back and you understanding the expectation of God. And I hope you guys understood this yesterday, that God is going to reveal it to you plainly. That as you take up this responsibility, it's going to be so plain. The will of God is going to be so plain. The heart of God is going to be so plain. The glory of God is going to be so plain. It's going to be so plain. You're not going to be guessing no more. You're getting ready to meet with God. I hope this is, I hope you guys see this. I am not up here teaching you something because I'm so deep and I just know the scripture and I, uh-uh. Because -uh. I'm really not, y'all know that. Not deep at all, right? No, this is the Lord. And so the Lord, hey, man of God, the Lord is saying to us, this is where I'm going and I'm expanding you, but I need you to understand the prerequisite of standing in proxy for me. To stand in proxy for me means to bend over. To stand in proxy for me, it means to get up from your table. It means to get up from the seat that you should be occupying. It means to get up from the, the, from the, 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 the names that people give you, the accolades that people give you. It means to get up and to move in this, I, I don't even want to call it humility because it goes beyond humility. This is just a station. This is just a seat where every room you go in, you are like, okay, God, let me remove so that I can work, so I can stand in proxy. That's what prophecy does, guys. Do you see this? It's the towel wrapped around you. Prophecy and you're washing their feet. That's what prayer does, guys. It's the towel wrapped around you and you're washing their feet. That's what miracle signs and wonders is, guys. It's the towel wrapped around you and you're washing their feet. That's what it is. You're washing them in the word. You're washing them in the expectation, in the anticipation, and in the revelation of the Father. You fill a basin. You fill a basin with water. You fill a basin. Come on, guys. And then you begin to prophesy. Come on, guys. You lay aside how I feel. You lay aside what I think. You lay aside all of that, right? And you begin to wash their feet with the expectation and the revelation. I hope y'all see this. You, you get ready to not come into power because you already have it. Isn't that what verse three opened up with? <laughs> Isn't that what verse three opened up with? Isn't that what verse three opened up with? And Jesus knowing that the father had given all things into his hands. So you're not coming into a power. You're coming into a responsibility. And the more responsibility, the more authority you have. The greater the expectation and the anticipation of the father upon you to look like his son. And his son is the picture of washing feet. That was his whole life. That was his whole life. Moved with compassion. Why? Because I came here for one thing, to wash the people. I moved from the throne of glory to wash the people. Right? And so, all I'm saying is, 
not even I'm all the Holy Spirit. Maybe the Holy Spirit is saying that as you begin to move in this power, you're going to begin to prophesy with such a clarity. Your discernment is going to go to the next level. Your prayers are going to have a take on a whole nother sound because you're standing in proxy for the Father. When you go and you approach the scriptures, it's going to be opened up unto you. It's going to this is a whole nother adventure. Don't get caught up. When people come and do you like Peter, when they see you serving and they see you giving and they, they see you giving out and expending, they see you casting, getting up from your seat that they feel like you should be sitting in and taking off your garments that they feel like because everybody else doesn't get up from their seat because everybody else doesn't remove their garments because nobody else moves to wash the feet of the people and they see you getting up and they say, no, no, no. What are you doing? Don't, don't get caught up in that. Don't get caught up in and people saying that you shouldn't and what are you doing and why do you? Don't get caught up in that. Fill the basin with water and stay focused. What do you do when you're spit upon by those whose feet you washed? You keep washing. You keep washing. What's more important? What's more important? This is this is this is a word of responsibility. Y'all 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 see this? This is a word of responsibility. You keep washing. He hung on a cross and he says, "Forgive them, for they know not what they do." And the expectation or the revelation or the anticipation of the Father is that we too would. Lift our voice and say, forgive them, Father. They have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea what's happening right now. They have no idea of the redemption and the sozo that's taking place. And they have no idea. So God, don't hold it to their account. Forgive them. Because they have no idea what they're really doing. Right? So what? They spit on you. So what? It didn't kill you. It didn't take you out. It doesn't disturb your responsibility. It doesn't disturb your authority. And it does, nor does it remove the expectation of God from your life. If I address them in this season and I have this revelation, it will disturb the authority. It will disturb me moving in the responsibility. And I will have to answer to him. Because I know the expectation. If they spit on Jesus, they're going to spit on you. And all it is, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Come on. We wrestle not with people. It's, the, it's, that, it's that principality. It's that territorial spirit that knows that sozo has come near. Trying to get you to back away, to back up from your position. And I don't know about you, but for me, I've done that way too long. So what are we going to do in this season? Keep washing. We're going to keep washing. So what? You go into places. Something happened like that today. Where, you know, you go into places and people will try to make you feel small. People will say little jabs. You know how people will? They'll jab and take shots at you and stuff like that. You know what? Keep washing. Keep washing. Guys, I don't know about you, but for me, and this is why I'm telling the Lord, I want to go down in history. Not with man, but with him. I want to go down in history with him. So I'll keep washing. I want to have historical worship. Historical worship. Because my work is my worship. My worship is my work, right? So am I saying that this is going to be easy just because you've been expanded to stand in proxy for God? Now that you have this revelation, you think, you know, you're just going to walk in doors and just release healing, release miracles, release, release, release. Absolutely you will, but you're going to have to choose. Jesus at that moment could have told anybody at that table, amen, we're getting ready to pray.
One second. Jesus could have told anybody, anybody at that table, get up and do it. Jesus could have told a parable. There once was a man who called his 12 closest friends to the table. He didn't do it. He got up and he did it himself. Because at the end of the day, he was doing everything that he did was to honor and glorify the Father. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If the Father is really for real, for real in us, we got to let him out. We got to let him speak. We got to let him move. Yeah. Yeah, washing feet is is serving. You know, it's it's serving. It's serving everybody. It's looking at everybody the same. It's washing them and causing them to be clean in the expectation, the revelation, the anticipation of the word of the Lord. Taking on other people's responsibility. You mean because the servant wasn't there? Because the servant wasn't there? It wasn't everybody at the table. It wasn't their responsibility to wash their feet, to wash the feet. Are y'all seeing this? At the table, 13 people. It wasn't anybody's responsibility there to wash the feet. The person who was supposed to wash the feet was not there. And so Christ was saying, right? So many times we come into settings and we see what's not being done, but nobody moves to do it. And if it's a kingdom thing, right? If it's a kingdom thing, then why not move to do it, right? Yes, we cover each other's shortcomings, absolutely. There's a difference between shortcomings and responsibilities. So if you're talking about shortcomings, the difference between responsibility and shortcomings. But my job, isn't that what Christ did? He covered our shortcomings with himself. And so that's what we're doing. So yes, so yeah, shortcomings. So if I'm working with you and you see clearly what's going on with me, while you still love me and I, you still, you know, maybe hold me accountable, however the Lord would have you to deal with me, because Christ wasn't no chump, right? Jesus wasn't a chump. Here it is in this, in this scripture too, right? Peter gets out of pocket. And what does Christ do? He puts him back in the pocket and he says, look, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part of me. Jesus wasn't a chump, but at the same time, there was such a level of grace to cover what he could, what he did not have the capacity to understand at the moment, right? I don't know if you're like me, I'm looking at Peter and I'm like, dang, Peter, can't you just get it together? <laughs> he don't watch everybody else's feet. He gets to you and you want to start tripping, right? Right? Hey, woman of God, is this making sense? Peter done walk with him. Peter done talk to, with him. Peter knows who he is and Peter is still acting up, right? He's Peter. And so, right? Christ doesn't be like, Peter, what is wrong with you? I don't understand why you just don't get it. Peter, I just get out, you know? <laughs> no, he puts Peter back in line. He says, look, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part of me. Then Peter's like, wash everything. Wash my hair, wash my ears, brush my teeth, wash me all. <laughs> Peter is just all over the place. And Christ loves him. And Christ, this is another picture just for dealing with people, right? Christ deals with Peter, with who Peter is in the moment. Do y'all see this? I love this about Christ. And this is where I think we fall short so many times. Christ doesn't try to change Peter, meaning he brings him into revelation and Peter gets it. But he doesn't break Peter's spirit. He doesn't try to, you know, push Peter into, you know, conforming now. Y'all see Peter's style of paradigm living is just what Peter did all the time. And so even in this moment, Christ deals with Peter 
with how Peter is in the moment. So he goes from one extreme to the next. No, no, no. You're not touching my feet to wash everything. Wash everything. Right? And Christ, and then Christ pulls him into the revelation. He says, you're, I've washed your feet. You're clean. Through and through. Sozo. Through and through. Squeaky clean. Through and through. Right? So he goes from one extreme to the next. Christ doesn't get out of pocket. Christ doesn't have him puff. Christ doesn't, you know what I'm saying? That's something we got to strive for because, you know, that's something we got to. Christ had patience. He had so many patience. But, you, but you, I hope that answers your, your question. When you look at this scripture, what do you see? Do you see an expectation to cover shortcomings? Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see an expectation of grace? Do you see an expectation? You know, here's the thing. When I'm looking at this, you know, my mind wanders around this scripture. If we've been traveling together and you my folk, right? If I'm one of the disciples at this table, why wouldn't I want to get up and wash everybody's feet? Right? So that, I don't know, that makes you think, you know, we always talk about the 12, the 12, the 12, but the dynamic between the 12. Right? Hmm, interesting. So, you know, we can go so many places with that, but we're not going there tonight. But when you look at the scripture and we're looking at, when we look at, go back to Monday's teaching, right? Go back to Monday's teaching, uh... And we're talking about being in proxy or standing in proxy for God and, and signing God's name and spiritual power of attorney. I don't know. You know, but when we see that power, authority and responsibility and we go to John chapter 13. And we see the power stance that we see Jesus standing in in chapter 14. It's birth out of chapter 13. His willingness for the heart of the father to always bleed through in every situation. And so, you know, we have to make, we, we have to know what our weak spots are and, you know, we have to, the places where we struggle with people. You, you know, if you've been in church, if you've served in leadership in church for any amount of time and uh, there's a hierarchy of position, there's a hierarchy of all that stuff. When you see how he stands in verse in chapter 14 and you see that it's birth from chapter 13. And I'm and so to Christ, right? So to Christ. Do you see where I'm going with this? We've all struggled with ungrateful people and you will still struggle with ungrateful people. But that has to, that still has nothing to do with our responsibility. Has nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Are y'all seeing this? If you've been like me and you've said, where are the miracles? Where's the power? Where's the answer to prayer? He's showing us. He's showing us. Right? He's showing us. So this is like next level because it's pushing us. Here it is. Okay. Let's just say you were Christ. You are raised from the dead and you go back to chill and talk to them suckers that didn't even believe you were going to be raised from the dead, called your folk. 
Now they didn't walk with you. They didn't heard your teaching. They didn't see your miracles. Now you done been, they put you in a tomb and they running around here and lost their mind. Left you hanging on a cross, right? We would have, stone would have been rolled away. We would have folded up the cloth and we would have been like, let's go. Angels, let's be out, <laughs> right? But Jesus doesn't do that. He goes back and he meets with the very people who should have known him, who seen him, who had the revelation of him, right? Right? Their understanding was not yet opened of the scripture, the Bible says, right? Of the scripture, but their understanding was opened of him. Peter, who do people say that I am? By the time the crop, the, 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 crows three times you have denied me Peter who do you say that I am flesh and blood has not told you this and they all watched Mount Transfiguration now you looking at Moses Elijah and Jesus you talking about building some tents <laughs> right the cock crows you have denied him. Right? In chapter 14, Jesus says, he says, if you don't believe me, believe, believe the work themselves. He says that in chapter 14, doesn't he? He says, if you don't believe me, then believe the work themselves. Because if you believe the work, you're going to believe God. And if you believe God, then by default, you're going to believe in me. If you don't believe me, believe the work, he said. Believe the work. So, for us, it's going to be a wild adventure. And you're going to have to keep yourself so that you can keep moving in the expectation of God. And these signs follow the believer. If the signs are not following us, because it's really not following us, right? It's following the one who does the work following the one that does the work. I want the signs so that he would get the glory. Does that make sense? So let me pray for you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Amen. Amen. He's good, isn't he? We thank you for your we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that we are still unveiling. You're still unveiling and we're still unfolding in the word, in this paradigm shift for prayer and for moving in the things of God. And so, God, thank you that this is a season a full, a full activation. Thank you, God, that your believers will have signs that are following them that says God is here. Healing the sick, God is here. Casting out demons, God is here. These signs following the believer. Not the believer conjuring up power in the corner. These signs follow the believer. That when your people show up, these signs show up too. And so, God, thank you that you're causing us to become one and to know you and to know the expectation that you have for us. But concerning this word today, Father, these are people, every person, doesn't matter how long they've been saved, how long they've been in the church, whatever their function is in the church, outside of the church, whatever, whatever uh, title they carry, whatever their glory would be, just like the song says, Taking our name, taking our glory, 
pouring it out in the earth for your fame that is connected to your name. That every skill and talent and ability that we have, we lay it down at your feet and we say to you, King of Glory, use it to wash the people. And so God, we thank you that the stronghold of pride will not come upon our lives. The stronghold of strange thinking, the stronghold of not wanting to get up from our seat because we deserve it. We, we fast, we pray, we pop our collar because we do everything right and we live a holy lifestyle. So I deserve to be here. Thank you, God, that these are people or are people who can't wait to get up from their seat, cast off their garment and begin to wash the feet of your people. Where we would have respect to persons, if there's any prejudices in us, if there's any respect to person in us, if we look at people and we don't want to do something for them, but we would do it for someone else, we cast it out tonight in the name of Jesus. We say, God, that you are an equal opportunity employer. <laughs> and so these are your people are equal opportunity, God, God workers and glory carriers. And where you say distribute the glory, that's where we distribute the glory. And so, God, allow us to walk, allow the mind of Christ to be in us where we don't judge people. Where we're not looking at the outer appearance of man. But we're here for to do one thing. I'll let you work through us. And so, God, I believe that these are people are, are moving in such a, a, a power and a might. According to Ephesians 3 and 20. We, we talk about that scripture in terms of blessing. We talk about that scripture in terms of increase. We talk about that scripture in terms of like potential and purpose. But God, what about gifts, callings, and election? Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above. That we would, we would prophesy and it would blow our minds to see God what you do. We will pray and the manifestation and how you show up. We will walk in a region and things will shift. Ephesians 3 and 20, our work that we must do as we stand in proxy for you. Ephesians 3 and 20, the work. According to the power that worketh on the inside of us. And we know that power, according to the scripture, is faith. But God, that faith also working with humility, the power of humility, the power of faith, the power of decreasing, the power of wanting to please you, the power of laying down our life. And as we see what Jesus did, that's what we do. As we hear what he said, that's what we say. And so King of Glory, thank you that these people on this scope, they are rock solid. And when the enemy will try to come and sift them, just like with Peter, God, you have prayed for them. Thank you, Father, that the people on this scope, just like Peter, once you've been converted, strengthen the brethren. That these people are not only uh, uh, have the breaker anointing, but God, they're able to impart, my God, humility. The sound, the sound, the mind of serving authentically and without reservation. Without reservation. And so God, all of us say that before it even happens, Every person who will come to hurt us, every person who will ever talk about us, every person who will ever reject us, every person who will be ungrateful, every person who would act as if we were insignificant, we forgive them in advance. We release them in advance because in the scheme of things, it, in the scheme of things, it doesn't matter. In the scope of eternity, it's a non-essential. And so even if there are people right now 
in our lives who are doing these things right now, we lift our, I lift my hands in proxy, not for you, but for the Father in you. And that the revelation of it doesn't matter. That the revelation of the power is not diminished. Your authority is not diminished. And the expectation of God is not diminished. It doesn't matter. Thank you, God, that these are people. It will be so hard to offend them. That the enemy will come a million different ways and they don't even see the offense. Their eye is on the rock that is higher than them. Their eye is on you, the rock. And it causes their feet to be like hinds feet. It causes them to leap. It causes them to not be ensnared in the snare of the fowler. It causes them. And so where our paradigm would always be, our thoughts would always be looking for people who are going to do us wrong or we could sniff it out or we could desert it. Thank you, Father, that there is now just a covering. A covering, not that we're naive, but it just doesn't matter. It doesn't, I've got, I've, I've got power for that. I've, I've got grace for that. I've, I've got blood for that. I've got the blood of Jesus. I've got the name of Jesus for that. And so, God, we, we, I bless you that for every person on here who have been through some seasons and some people knocked them down and some people did do some things to them and they are recovering from the place of insignificance or recovering from the place of being tossed to the side. They're recovering from the place from being told to shut up and sit down and be quiet because you ain't got no power. Who do you think you are? You don't have enough street cred. And they were thought to be the person that was only good enough to wash the feet. Thank you, God, that you show them that they're just like you, your son. And that's the best position to be in, washing feet. And so for every person who has struggled with insignificance, with hurt from voices that were to grow them and it snared them. Thank you that this revelation is unlocking the snare. It's breaking the snare. It's breaking the bondage. It's removing the yoke. And that there would just be a freedom to go in the power of the Lord Jesus. And so God, we receive it. Because this is what you want. We receive it. Because this is what you are anticipating. We receive it. Because this is your expectation. We receive it. Because this is revelation. And so as of this moment, we can't go back. As of this moment, I release a decree that it is impossible for them to turn back because there's nothing to turn back to. And this Egyptian, you will see no more. Here's the thing. The Bible the, in the New Testament talks about when the Egyptians went through the Red Sea, it was a type and a shadow of baptism. And so their baptism, what they came through in their baptism was the same waters that wiped out an Egyptian. And this Egyptian you shall see no more. Same road, same water, same time frame. So God can wipe away. God can wipe out. Same water. What is a baptism to you is a wipeout to your oppression. What is a baptism to you, a blessing. 
a, a moment of not just transition, but a moment of transformation. Right? Not just transition, but transformation. You just keep marching through your baptism. You just keep moving through your transition and your transformation. And what is behind you is not behind you. What is behind you is a what was behind you because it is no longer there. Hope that makes sense. And so the sound of the oppressor, the sound that would make you vacillate and hesitate, the sound that used to crush your neck, the sound that used to choke your sound, the sound that robbed you of your resources. The sound that was a system to enslave you and your God in you. As you transition and as you are being transformed, he can erase. He is the master eraser. And so, Father, we thank you. I thank you. I just release the sound of the glory eraser. Wherever the system came from, whatever door it came through, that would cause your people to doubt that you, God, was in them, that you were performing through them, that the power, the presence, and the weight is on their life. And here's the thing. For anybody who's like, well, I, you know, you don't know what I did and I'm in, I'm in and I'm out and I'm sometimes the, I'm in and I'm out and I'm like all over the place. Here's the thing. Not all of the Israelites were in agreement about going through. Not one of them died in those waters. Not one. There's such a grace. He gets it. But there's a grace for the place of your struggle. And just because you're struggling, the grace ain't. And if you let him, he'll take the struggle and he'll give you the grace. I don't know what you mean, Shemaka. I, I don't know what you mean. I know what you're referring to, but I don't know what you mean in terms of this, if that makes sense. Is this making sense? Beauty for ashes, it's a principle. And so where you're like, well, I don't pray, and, and I don't know, and I don't have the training, and you don't know, and I just this, and I've been saved for a week, and here it is, y'all been saved for like a million years. It doesn't matter. The oldest to the youngest all went through. And the Egyptian, the sound, the system, all of it died. In the place of their freedom, it became the place of their death. This is such a moment of freedom because God's using you. God using us. Is such liberty where the spirit of the Lord is. Where the spirit of the Lord is, where the work of the Lord, where the word of the Lord, where the decree of where the spirit of the Lord is. So how could you be enslaved? How could you be in bondage? That day is over. And so, God, I just prophesy that out of your people will come the sound of you. The revelation, the expectation, the anticipation, and the manifestation. And that your people arise and they just receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. So I pray that you know, keep studying this out. Keep moving through this. Keep blessing God for this. God is using you. God is using you. In ways that you just didn't even, wasn't even on your radar. Amen. 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 Bless you, man of God. All right, guys. So, um, yes. All right, everybody go to John 5 and 4. Uh, did I say Friday was going to be dreams? For an angel. Did I say it was going to be? Amen. And so keep, this is all, all this week, all we did this week, man of God, was just open the door. That's it. There is so much revelation that God's going to give you on the other side of the door. Y'all hear me? You just stand at the threshold. That's it. That's all. You just stand at the threshold. You need to go through the door because there's so much more revelation. There is so much more revelation. Does that make sense? Amen. Uh, John 5 and 4 for an angel. Are y'all there? I'm in G King James. Um, I'm going to start with verse 2. No, I'm going to start with verse 1. John 5, we're going to start with verse 1. And this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Bethesda means, if you're taking notes, Shemekai, house of mercy. Are flowing water. House of mercy are flowing water. So Jesus is going up for a feast. And so the time, because y'all know the story, we're going to still read this, with the, the script, the verses. The time that Jesus shows up, it's out of season for the troubling of the water. Woo, this is good. Anyway. So it's out of tea season. It's not time for the troubling of the water. But because Jesus is the house of mercy. Woo. Because Jesus is the house of mercy. Anyway, okay. Well, we'll see this. Okay. So that's what Bethesda means. <laughs> I'm going to keep it together. Um, verse 3. And in these lay a great multitude of imp imp impotent folk, blind halted, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. So we know that there was this, uh, the pool of mercy was just that. It was a pool of mercy. And the, there was at a, at a particular time, an angel came and the water became activated. Troubling of the water, just activated, right? And so if you get in, you were healed, right? It was, it was a miraculous thing. But here it is, Jesus, he is the house of mercy as coming to the house of mercy, if this is making sense. So there lay all these people, ailing, blind, lame, withered, waiting, waiting for the moving of the water. Okay, I'm going to keep it together. And there, and at first five, and a certain man was there, and he had an infirmity 30 and eight years. And when Jesus saw him, lie when Jesus saw him laying there and knew that he had been there now a long time in that case he said to him will thou be made whole whole as in sound in body sound in mind not just with the little issue that was going on with him but restore to health will you be made restored to health and the impotent man said answer him and said sir I have no man. I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. I have no man to have mercy on me, even though I'm at the pool of mercy. I have nobody 
I'm at the pool of mercy, but nobody's having mercy on me. So it's right it's it's right there, but it's so far out of reach. It's it's right, but I can't see. <laughs> um, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. And Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole. So I don't know, Shemakai, how what you were when you were connecting the Red Sea to this. Was that what you was? I don't know exactly what you were asking. But do y'all got what this, Shemakai? I don't know where you at. Um, but this is, I mean, this is the picture of Jesus. Do y'all understand? This is the picture of Jesus. That the house of mercy. The house of mercy. He is the house of mercy. And so this is what I'm about to get happy. And then I'm going to have to get off because I'm about to cry. And I'm not going to ugly cry in the name of Jesus. So when we go to John chapter 14, right? And he says to them, he says, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Uh -huh, five, the number of grace. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. What you see me do, right? What you see me do, that's God doing it. That's God doing it. Here it is. The house of mercy, Jesus, you in Jesus, Jesus going to be with the father and greater works shall you do that now you are walking around the earth like the house of mercy. Your new name is house of mercy. You can go by and where people are withered and they're blind and they're lame and they're maimed and they've had issues for years and years and years and they, they're about to give up and they're about to walk away and they feel like they have no hope and they're depressed and it seems like it's just not coming together. Here it is, God will say, house of mercy. Jesus. Hope of glory. That's why you're standing in proxy. We ain't got to wait for a pool. We don't have to wait for the season of miracles. You're in a perpetual season of miracles. And these signs follow the believer. You house of mercy, you. You distributor of glory, you. You distributor of revelation, you. You distributor of manifestation, you. You distributor of all things, God. You distributor of the decree of God. House of mercy. Take up your bed and walk. Woo! Jesus. Got my composure back. Are y'all seeing this? So this is John chapter 14 lived out. This is the expectation of God upon your life. This is the expectation. And the Bible says that Jesus looked at him and he knew that this man had been going through for a long time. And he says to him, do you want to be made whole? And this is where people will be like, you just know what? You just don't know what's going on with me. I've been here a long time. This isn't an issue I've had just for a year. You know, I don't even really hope no more. I've tried to get into the water. I've got so many prophecies over my life. So many people have told me it's right there in front of me. I just can't seem to get myself moving. I just can't seem to just get there. I don't, God says, here it is. I'll blow you by them, O house of mercy. So you about to, you're supposed to be walking around in, in the earth, walking around on your job and decreeing to them, take up your bed and walk. Now here's the thing. I have to go and check the other accounts, but we'll just, we're just going to go with this account right here. Then say this man was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, talking in tongues. It does not say that. And Jesus looking at the man. say the spiritual condition of this man. It doesn't say, oh, well, you know, that one's okay and that one's okay. So you need to go and look for the people who be living holy and they got, you know, and, and go have mercy on them. No, Jesus looked at him and said, do you want to be made whole? Yeah. House of mercy. House of mercy. House of mercy. You Take what is out of time and you bring it in time and you interrupt time because that's what God wants. A God who's not governed by time says, I'm not governed by time. Time doesn't move me. However, y'all are in time. How can I get that which is out of time in time? 
so that it's right on time. Who will go for us? Who will go for us? Who will go for us? Amen. 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 You carry the hope of glory. You distribute the hope of glory. Transformation for people is in your days, your times, and your seasons. And Jesus was on his way, minding his business. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Love you, woman of God. Amen. So we will be not on tomorrow. I was getting ready to tell a tale. Um, I don't think we know. We're not going to be on tomorrow. I really don't need to be on Friday. But anyway, I'll work it out. Yeah, so um, go deeper in this word. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Study it for yourself. Put it on yourself. Move in it for yourself. God is speaking to you about you in this word and him in you moving in this word. Amen. Amen. So I love you guys. And um, thank you, man of God. Love the Lord. He's so awesome. Um, I will see you guys on Friday. Friday. Yeah, Friday. I believe Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, right now I, I think I have um, Ty. Uh, we have we haven't done hers because she wasn't on last week. Are you gonna be? On, are you still on Ty? Shante, it's all God. Y'all know I'm so. I just I am not deep. That is all the Lord. Um, because she wasn't on last time. So yeah, so I got one and a half maybe in the queue. So. If there's not a whole lot, then we'll just do, you know, and then we'll just pray and we'll, you know, get off. Yeah, so I love you guys and um, tomorrow's going to be awesome and great and gravy. And uh, I'm excited to see how this, uh, yeah, how this is played out in your life because it's an immediate word. It's an immediate thing. All right, guys, I love you. Yeah, no, I'm really not. You guys are too deep for my shallow mind. Okay. Okay. Yeah, email it to me. Hey, guys, when you email me, um, I need you to say in the email whether or not um, it's cool to share it. Because I'm going to assume that it's cool to share it. If you don't want to share, you know, I always use discretion on whether or not, you know, um, it is a niece dreams at gmail.com yes it is a niche dreams at gmail.com but if you're like hey bless you man of god if you're like hey you know what i mean i'm not sure about this please tell me up front okay amen 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 yep best week ever Amen. All right, guys. Yep. Thank you, Cedrica. Yep. That's it. Send the emails there. Thank you, man of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And remember, you know, if it's, if it's, you know, something not to be released on here, I'll just hit you back. If you send me, when you send me the dreams, guys, and I don't respond, it's because I'm saving it for the scope. Because I have multiple emails, so that email is just for that. So I don't even check it every day. So I'm not ignoring you. I just, I don't want to start getting up in there and doing it because that's not the point. Right? So I don't want to, I try not, I try to stay away because <laughs> I'm like a kid. Anyway, yeah, so I love you guys and um, Friday, see you guys Friday, okay? All right, love you. Good night.